Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and I've got five albums if you're looking to get into melodic death metal. We are And hey, if you'd like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Plenty other content to explore on the channel. And I want to be clear about this list. I'm not necessarily stating these are the five best melodic death metal albums or even my five favorite melodic death metal albums. These are just five amazing melodic death metal albums that also happen to be extremely accessible, and I think those new to the genre will find them really easy to listen to. That said, let's get into it. All right, first up, this was a big deal for me. We got to talk about Dark Tranquility and Damage Done. And some people may find this an odd choice because I feel like it's an album that doesn't necessarily get talked about as much within the discography. But this was my first, like, big melodic death metal album. And it is just start to finish flawless. I've talked before, I think, on my tier list that I did for Dark Tranquility about how I would even lay out by the pool... And when everyone else was listening to pop music, I had this playing on my disc man, and it's just amazing. It opens up with Final Resistance, and it's just got so many great, not only guitar hooks, but vocal hooks and sing-along moments. Just, the Final Resistance. <laughs> so good. And then you go into Monochromatic Stains, The Treason Wall, Cathode Ray Sunshine. I could go on and on. This, this is just flawless. The synths, the guitars, and even though it's supremely heavy and just super death metal, it's still very accessible. This was the one that launched me head first into everything else. This is what got me into pretty much every other band on this list. And ultimately just, it, it was the perfect segue. It really was like up until I listened to this album, I was kind of just in metalcore land and that's fine. I love metalcore. In fact, I may end up doing a metalcore list for dummies. Let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in that. But yeah, this it's just, it's stunning. It's not talked about enough. Even that album art, you know, dude's just head like exploding with blood. <laughs> It'll catch your eye, but then you'll stick around for just these stunning melodies and the production too. just like seems to surround you. Every time I put it on, I feel like I'm just taken away to a completely different time and place. And there's something to be said about that. All right, next up, we've got Arch Enemy with Wages of Sin. This is their first album to feature Angela Gasso on vocals, and for my money, she is still their best vocalist that they've ever had. I know a lot of people like to simp for Alyssa now, but for me, Angela's where it's at. Simp! And that's not to knock Alyssa at all. She's a great vocalist too. It's just that there's something so primal about Angela's growls. She fits just that classic kind of Gothenburg-y sound. I think better than Alyssa does. In any case, this also opens with my all-time favorite Arch Enemy track, which is Enemy Within. I, If you are not necessarily into melodic death metal at this point, put that track on, and I defy you to not get into it. <laughs> that song was built for a band coming out onto stage and starting their act. It's got that quiet, subtle opener with the piano, and then the guitars start coming in with the chugga 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 chugga. And then boom, it just like everything takes off and it's just so explosive and it sets the tone perfectly for just an all around amazing album. Other great tracks on here, Ravenous, Savage Messiah, The First Deadly Sin. It, it's another just really start to finish fantastic piece of work by some very talented musicians. The guitar work is amazing. There's so many great hooks all over this thing that, you know, always made me excited to try to learn some of them and pick them up as I was learning guitar. And speaking of covers again, like, I feel like this is like one of the quintessential, like, early 2000s cover arts. Like, Every album kind of had this look where it's just like, it's very aesthetically pleasing. You're not really sure what it means. There's all some sort of like symbol involved and then like flames or like lightning or like something coming off of it. And it just encapsulates a time that I'm very fond of and sort of like has that nostalgia edge to it as well. But that aside, it still holds up incredibly well. And again, it's, it's super catchy. So again, if you're looking to get started, this is a good one to go with. All right, this is a band that I knew I had to include on this list because Trixie, she does not really like metal. She's not really into it. There's a few things she'll listen to here and there, but there is one band that she will repeatedly bring up that she really does enjoy whenever I turn it on and really wants to see them live too, and that's Amon Amarth. And I had to think a lot about which album I wanted to include from them. I almost went with Twilight of the Thunder God, but ultimately I had to pick 
with Odin on our side. I think this is their most consistent album, and it's kind of a nice balance between their older, kind of harsher sound and their kind of more modern, pristine, polished sound that we hear now. Again, I won't let you down. Like, I picked out albums that I felt like start to finish were incredibly consistent, and this is another one of those albums for sure. You got another awesome opener with Valhalla Awaits Me, you got Asitar, Gods of War Arise, the title track, Cry of the Black Birds has one of the just most infectious guitar lines that they've ever written, and then Under the Northern Star, too. And at that point, I've named almost every song in the album, but that's just how good this thing is. There's not a dud on here, and it's just fun, rollicking Viking metal. Perfect for throwing back a horn of ale and riding slipping deer into the sunset. These guys are still on my bucket list of bands to see live that I've somehow managed to miss every single time they've come around, but hopefully one day. All right, this is probably going to be a little bit of a controversial pick. The band, not so much, but the album, yes. So In Flames, of course, one of kind of the big four of melodic death metal, despite my misgivings of their more recent directions. They had to be on here. They had to be included. And remember, I'm not picking the best album. I'm not even necessarily picking my favorite album, though in this case, I'll kind of spill the beans. I think they, <laughs> I think this one is my favorite album from them. And that's going to piss some people off because it is reroute to remain. I remember there were ads everywhere. You couldn't escape them in guitar and metal magazines about this thing coming out. And I, I was interested. I wanted to check it out. And I remember I heard Cloud Connected and I was just like, oh my God. What is this? This is so cool. That opening synth line that like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you hear that and you're like, what's it? And then the little dun 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 and then it kicks in with the more kind of 80s sounding synth line and the guitars come in with that triumphant dun 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 dun. Like even the people who hate this album and say that this was kind of the beginning of the end for them, I I defy you to not enjoy that song. Like, tell me that's not an amazing song. It's so good. It's just so well constructed and composed and everything about it is just designed to just get you thrown up the horns and banging your head and unmatched. Then you've also got Trigger and you've got the title track and then just a lot more. And I know there are more down moments on here. I know there are some singing moments that definitely deeply divide the fan base. But I got to tell you, like, not only do I just love this album for its own, but again, it's the perfect like entry level In Flames album. This was the one that got me hooked and then forced me to go back and get into their earlier discography. So I say if it hadn't been for Reroute to Remain, I wouldn't have gotten into Horacle. I wouldn't have learned about the Jester Race. I wouldn't have fallen in love with Colony. Astounding album, really great, perfect entry level stuff. And I got to say, every time I have people on the podcast to talk about In Flames, they all come out and, and accept that this is a great album at this point. I feel like kind of we've gotten beyond the initial hate squad of, oh, they're changing their sound. And of course, now I'm on the hate squad of, <laughs> you know, over there, they've changed their sound too much. But, you know, for people who like the newer stuff, too, I will say good for you. Great. All right. And I had to include this one on the list, too, but it had to be last, too, because I feel like this is probably the most difficult Probably the somewhat least accessible album on this list, but it's accessible enough that it's a good one to kind of finish it off with. And that is At the Gates with Slaughter of the Soul. Jesus Christ, I just realized that that's written in... Is that fucking Papyrus? Nobody's perfect. Yeah, this album is, of course, legendary. It's one of the ones, of course, responsible for just launching this genre and the Gothenburg sound in particular. But that aside, it's got so many hooks and great riffs and... Great scream along vocal parts and Thomas Lindbergh's vocals like this. This was part of it that I think made it difficult for me to kind of like ease my way into them because you sort of love them or hate them, but they definitely grow on you and they're just so unique. He's got this weird hoarse, raspy bark and it sounds unlike anybody else I've really heard. I think I came across one band recently and I was really shocked that he has a pretty similar sound to Lindbergh because nobody else does. Again, so many amazing tracks on this album. Blinded by Fear, absolute classic, another amazing album opener. I feel like I didn't necessarily seek out to find all albums that had amazing openers, but that's just sort of what happened here. You've got Slaughter of the Soul, you've got Coles, you've got Suicide Nation. Oh great, I'm gonna get demonetized now for saying the, the bad word. But yeah, if you love riffs upon riffs upon riffs, this is definitely the album for you. And also for those of you like kind of coming over into the fray from metalcore, 
it, this is a great transitional album for that too, because all those metalcore artists are very much influenced by this album, especially like the first and second waves of metalcore artists. You listen to their riffs and then listen to this album and you can see the direct trajectory. But yeah, what else can I say? It's it's one of the greatest albums in the genre of all time, and it just also happens to be one that you cannot miss if you are finding your way, stumbling your way into the melodic death metal genre. And that's it, y'all. Five albums that you definitely need to check out if you're getting started in melodic death metal. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite of these five albums is, and also, what albums did I miss? I definitely considered including the Black Dahlia Murder. I know everybody's going to be screaming about that. They were on here. I was considering including either Nocturnal or Unhollowed, and really any number of albums in their discography. But ultimately, I wanted to stick to bands that had more of that kind of classic Gothenburg sound, as opposed to... I feel like the Black Dahlia Murder kind of sends you off in a different direction sonically than what I really was targeting for this list. And of course, don't go anywhere because there's plenty more videos coming right after this one. I actually have built a series kind of around this genre for dummies thing, but then I've also got tier lists, album roundups and reviews of more recent underground metal albums, Bandcamp exploration, the podcast where I get to interview these fascinating musicians, and so much more. So plenty of reasons to subscribe and stick around. Also in the description, you can find links to our social media, the email newsletter, our Patreon, and subscribe star if you want to make that extra jump to becoming a full-on supporter, and of course MetalTrenches.com for even more reviews and content. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.